What's up guys and welcome to another episode of El Jardim Perdido. Today, we're trying Paw Paw. All right, so I've been trying to grow Paw Paw for about three years now. I don't recall the exact name of the cultivar, but I, they were labeled American, I believe, and uh, I got two different kinds from two different growers. So one finally flowered this year and really I only I think I saw like two or three flowers. Um, the other tree didn't flower, so this was self-pollinated. Usually it's advised that you have at least two different cultivars and they can kind of cross-pollinate each other for better yields. So I did get lucky with that. It's not a very big fruit. I'll show you guys in a minute. I'll also show you the two trees and I actually got a pup on one of the trees too, on a side note that I'm kind of excited about. But basically, yes, there's uh, the pawpaw is an anona. Some of you may know pawpaw is like papaya. I'm not talking about that, but it's the only anona that grows up in the Northern United States. I think it can grow up to like, definitely a little past Kentucky, maybe even in Ohio. Um, I think I've even heard of them growing in New York. So it's pretty cool. It's basically a tropical fruit related to cherimoya, soursop, etc. So I'm excited to try this because not only is this my first harvest, but it's also the first time trying it. I'm not sure if it naturally fell off. I don't believe so. Um, it didn't ripen all the way on the tree, but what happened was I saw some like little peck marks, something got to it. Um, when I initially approached the tree, I look at it, I'm like, where's this fruit? I've been like waiting for for the past two months and I couldn't find it. It was dark, looked around. The next day I saw it on the ground. So luckily I was still able to salvage it, but um, I don't know if it was picked at peak ripeness. I let it counter ripen for a little bit and then wouldn't you believe it, I lost it again. It fell kind of under my drying rack somehow. I had it on the kitchen. And uh, anyway, last night I was able to retrieve it. About to break it out, but um, ideally, I think it may have slightly overripened, but we'll see. Um, it's supposed to be kind of custardy and you're supposed to eat them pretty ripe. I was smelling it and it, it's almost getting a little gamey, borderline. Hopefully um, it was kind of ripening at different stages. So hopefully, you know, part of it might be more ripe than others. We'll see. But uh, let me real quick show you guys the couple of trees I'm talking about, just so you can see you know, when you should maybe expect flowering or fruiting. So this one is the three-year-old, and I'd say we are getting up to seven feet here. Um, I've got it shaded by some mulberries, which is always a plus. We've been in a drought. It's not loving it. I need to give it a good soak, but um, it's got a pretty nice trunk here. I really haven't mulched well. They like to be next to, from what I've heard, bodies of water, rivers, um, you know, you don't want to saturate them, but they definitely like their moisture. And this guy hasn't been getting as much as he would like to. This triple digit heat dome we've been talking about for the past two months, at least here in Texas. Anyway, uh, not too far from that, we have the second one that I think is just a year behind and we're looking at about four and a half feet on that one. And then we got a nice little pup down here next to it. Um, the thing is these two probably won't cross pollinate very well because basically that's the mother, same genetics, but I can dig this out, relocate it. And uh, the more the merrier, right guys? I've been anticipating this for quite a while now. Like I said, it's been hanging on the tree for a few months, taking its sweet time. Give you a close up here for you uh, connoisseurs out there. You let me know if that's too ripe. I'm not that worried about it. I do plan on saving the seeds um, for genetics. I know they need to be stratified. Could take a while in the fridge, but I'm all right with that. So in smelling it, it started smelling pretty pungent the other day. Um, tropical notes, kind of like mango, pineapple, which is awesome. Right now, like I said, it's, uh, it's, it's got a tinge of, you know, um, if you've ever had a fruit juice and it starts turning a little bit, you know, maybe a, your grape juice is turning into a wine there. 
Got a little fermentation, slight, 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 slight. But uh, so it's probably a little overripe, but we'll see. And it does um, variate, you know, right here where it looked like it got torn off, that's gonna be a little more ripe. And then um, this side doesn't look as ripe, so we can do a comparison. Already I can feel a lot of seeds and I'm trying to cut around them to not damage them. So I'm just kind of working my way around the seeds. Probably won't look <clears throat> all that pretty, but that's all right. All right, we get the gist. I probably should have brought a spoon too, but maybe I'll do that. On first inspection, um, it's not bad, and that's pretty awesome. Hang on. <clears throat> I got a spoon. But all right, guys, let me bring you in. I don't want to drop any, but I want to show you the color. The camera doesn't always pick up the cover color, but it's a nice dark orange. Ah, oh, smells really great getting in there. Tropical notes, a lot of mango I'm getting. <clears throat> so let's dig in. I'm going to check out the side that's a little more ripe first. Wow. So um, the texture is a lot like soursop custardy. I think I went a little too ripe there. I know for next time. I'm gonna go closer to the seeds on this other side where it's not as dark. A little bit of banana, a little bit of mango. People have said pineapple, maybe in the scent, but I'm not getting it too much. I'm, I'm feeling that soursop a little bit, not only with the texture, but uh, the taste. So when I talked about um, this part being overripe, you get all that, it's all good, but it does have a slight aftertaste. You can see, um, I don't know if you're catching it on cameras, but flies are getting at me like crazy right now from it. They are actually attracted to the flowers and the ants are for pollination because it puts out kind of a, a dead smell. So maybe they're getting a whiff of something like that in here. And I'm gonna um, eat around a seed real quick just to see what the pulp is like around there. Yeah, so all in all pretty awesome. I'm just gonna show you guys again. Usually the first year's fruit, and especially the first fruit, it's gonna be small. There's not a lot of flesh there. It's pretty seedy. The seeds are easy enough to eat around that it's not a big deal. Um, you know, if it were up to me, I'm not gonna go nuts on camera, and I know my kids wanna try this just off camera. But uh, it's easy enough to scoop you know, spit out seeds, whatever. But uh, yeah, this is pretty awesome. Based on how it was harvested and all, this is probably a little late, although it's still good. But I would recommend just making sure it gives a little, try not to squish it all the time because the reasons why these aren't commercially available is because they bruise very easily. Um, they don't keep long, so they wouldn't be very good for shipping. So yeah, I'd look for some slight browning, kind of like when a banana is going ripe. Um, this started out kind of green all around, so I don't know. Based on the taste, it tastes like, um, you know, it had fallen at a good time because it's not astringent or anything. If it were super early, it probably wouldn't ripen properly. It'd probably be really hard. But I will say that off the tree, it ripened, this is about four days from green to this. So gotta keep an eye on it, gotta check them quick. Again, another reason why they don't ship well. And even if they are green, be very careful when checking for the ripeness based on you know how firm it is because they're gonna bruise pretty easily. Well, all right guys, I just wanted to share that moment with you. I apologize, I haven't been very active on any of my social media. I made a video regarding this. I guess I can point to that somewhere, but um, neighbor problems. I'm uh, working on 
Well, right now I'm just trying to like keep afloat because it's a health issue and I've been working with the health department very closely and um, trying to at least literally come up for air. Um, just a brief synopsis if you don't want to check out the video, my neighbor has been basically fumigating us with smoke for the past going on nine months now. Almost every single night through every weekend. My garden's very unkempt. Some of that's because of the heat wave. I'm letting everything flourish. I'm not pruning. I'm even letting my grass grow to retain um, a little bit more moisture and stuff. We're in a drought. It's been a heat wave and I've got this. So usually I roll camera um, around golden hour and he typically home smoking all the time. So I found a window. I really wanted to try this pawpaw, try it on camera with you guys, walk you through a little bit, you know, how it grows, stuff like that. But yes, I've been a little out of things. Um, I do want to try to be a little more consistent, but it's been a health risk and a health issue and my videos are done outdoors, even though even indoors hasn't been safe. I've been uh, just evacuating with my kids and trying to make the best of it, going to the beach, going out, doing this and that. So it does make me wonder if I should take this operation to another location, which might happen, but uh, I'll keep you guys posted on that and I'll try to be a little more consistent with content. All right, so back to the subject of Paul Pauls. Um, I'm in some gardening groups. If any of my viewers know more than I do, you have any information you'd like to share with everyone else, be sure and put those in the comments below. And you know what, I'm always learning. I'm fairly new to uh, this particular fruit. Not a lot of people talk about them. And uh, it's odd because they grow pretty high up. I think in 9A here, I'm pushing the zone for them a little bit. There's a native pawpaw that I haven't gotten my hands on that's more bushy that I'd like to. If anyone watching has or knows of these or knows of a nursery, put it in the comments so I can get me some. But yes, it's odd that um, there's not more info on pawpaws other than the fact that it's not commercially available. But um, a lot more people should be growing them. The only downside I would say is especially from seed, um, they definitely take their sweet time. Got mine from a nursery about four and a half feet tall and it still took three years in the ground. They're not domesticated, so they're pretty finicky. They're not easy to graft. They're not easy to clone. The only thing um, is their little pups that's a little, that's one of the easiest ways to propagate them. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up. I meant to keep this short and sweet, and I really just wanted to share that moment with you guys and enjoy it myself on camera with you all. If you enjoyed this, consider subscribing. I do want to kind of start hitting the ground running a little harder on my YouTube channel. So likes, shares, comments, that all helps the algorithm. And I really um, wanna gain a little more momentum. All right, well, that's gonna do it for today's video. As always, thanks for tuning in. Until next time.